I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, embracing ordinary themes with an extraordinary perspective. Jim Anderson's collection, The Heart Has a Homely Face, delves into the depths of human connection. With introspective poetry rooted in Taoist philosophy, the author weaves a tapestry of universal emotions and experiences. Each poem not only encourages self-reflection, but also serves as a testament to the interconnectedness of all human beings and all beings as well. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Inks and Bindings for help putting him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing this wonderful book. The heart has a homely face. Jim, how are you today? Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. That was a very nice introduction. I appreciate it quite well. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Let me ask you, Jim, what do you mean the heart has a homely face? Well, look at the majority of us, Logan. The majority of us don't look like Robert Redford. The majority of us don't look like Marilyn Monroe. But most, most of us look like, you know, uh, guys like a gallon mill, the guys on the prison boat, or any that work in the department store. And uh, you, don't, you don't find a lot of and physical pieces, but you talk to these people of people, and their the warmth comes forth. You know, lovely people. Absolutely. Salt of the earth people. You know, you don't have to ha look like Robert Redford to have a good heart. The guy who's yeah. working on the pickup truck, uh, who might not look like Robert Redford, who might look more like, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, Barney from, uh, you know, the Andy Griffith show. Those guys yeah. do all the living and the dying and the working and the breathing and the uh, loving and uh, yep, there that is the heart of America. That is the heart of the human race. Your philosophy and your poetry is rooted in Taoist philosophy. Tell us a little bit about how Taoism has influenced both your life and your writing as well. It's influenced my life almost as a takeover plan. It wasn't something that I necessarily looked for. It was simply looking for something, and that was a way to communicate my understanding of God's love to, to all of these people. Found in the in addition to Christianity, not in Plato, but in addition to the teachings of Lao Tzu and his book. The dog is in. Uh, it's very, it's very basic there. It uh, covers pretty much everything that, um, you know, the old stuff about the, the Judeo Christian oil does. Uh, and um, following, following his um, thought pattern, I just can't help but notice that he's talking about something that. Not there. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. You can't tell it. You can't, you know, your senses don't perceive it. Uh, and, uh, and then you look over it. You stick to it. And when more in that map, in my epistle, I noticed. Sort of notice, in fact, that the uh, seller holding the wine is not an accurate measurement. That, um, the the seller does not hold the wine. The emptiness within the cup is what holds the wine. And we drink from that emptiness. And we become two. Hmm. It's a beautiful way of putting it. Absolutely. That it's the void that's filled with the wine that fills us and fills the void within us. 
Um, and as we Christians believe, that is either symbolically the blood of Christ or literally the blood of Christ, depending on your beliefs. And I think that's a, a beautiful way of uh, of putting it, which is why you're such an effective poet. Your poems strike a balance and find and evoke empathy and compassion. What do you hope readers take away from your poetry in terms of personal growth and understanding? My poetry? Yeah. Every day experience. Mm. The experience of all of us of us are enjoying. I think I hope we're enjoying it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because, um, I think all of us are a part of a same consciousness. Mm. Everything everything in the universe is connected. Yeah. Yeah, there definitely yeah. is a tie that binds us all. And you talk about tightening the string that ties all of humanity together, right? Yeah, yeah. Is there one poem within the pages of your book that touches you the most or you're most proud of? It gets changed from month to month. <laughs> yeah. It's like choosing among children, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you know, time the poem beats the wind. Mm. It's a little bit. Don't the Times apology to the wind. Tell us what that's about. It's about a well, it's an inner examination. Oh, what have you done? What have you done? Mm. It's um, it's a it's a it's a it's a and I imagine it touches upon the fleeting essence of time. I mean, time is constantly passing, and we're all kind of prisoners to time in a way, right? Yeah, one gets in the other way, you know, the next compensation, yeah. the compensation takes place, everybody's happy. It's not that simple, I realize, but, you mm -hmm. know, we're going to kind of a talk track to the ladies in here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Your book emphasizes the importance of weighing all subjects with equal objectivity. Tell us about how you maintain that balance and what you mean by that. Do me a favor and sure. The sure. I was talking about that uh, your poetry really, you know, strikes at people. And uh, you talk about weighing the importance of all subjects with equal objectivity. So you should look at uh, the different things of life, the different things of society, the different things of this world with uh, equal objectivity. Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell me, when you were writing this book, is this a collection of poems you have written over the years and compiled into a book, or were these poems you specifically wrote for the book? Mm. How long did it take you to write it? When do you like to write? Tell me a little bit about your writing process. lot of it's inspiration i'm sure that it just comes to you when you get before those uh those keys absolutely absolutely well we're glad you wrote this book it's a wonderful lovely book i think it'd be a perfect gift for the christmas season for the holiday season because it talks about the things that are important in life before we leave you today i know you live in a beautiful area you live in the, one of the prettiest states in the nation oregon uh, how much does that affect your writing? How much does that affect you as a person? Are you inspired by the beauty around you? 
if I was a boy, I never wanted to leave her because it, it's so beautiful. And of course, when I was out of high school, I had to join the army and see the world, which I didn't get to do. But um, other parts of the U.S. just were not, I felt, as <laughs> warming of the heart and blessing to the eyes. As far as it was, um, I mean, I appreciate you where I was. North Carolina is a beautiful state, too. I mean, I pray so. Mm. It's a whole thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Over Road. My brother and I went over Thunder Road. Yeah, but the movie was. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I won't quiz you. I won't quiz you. There's only one name we need to remember today, and that's the name of your book. It is called The Heart Has a Homely Face. It is written by Jim Anderson. He takes a deep dive into this look at uh, human connection, the importance of human connection. He offers introspective poetry that is rooted in Taoist philosophy, and he has woven together a tapestry of universal emotions and experiences. This is quite a book. It would make quite a great gift to yourself or to others. It is highly recommended. Jim, thank you so much for joining us here on Spotlight. Oh, my God. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight. Mm -hmm.